Hi and welcome back. Um, today I'm going to be painting another winter scene um, and this time a sort of a frosty evening scene looking over over some sort of desolate winter fields. Um, I'm using 100% um, cotton paper. It's cold pressed Milford. It's taped to my board and my board's at an angle of about 45 degrees. Um, I'm going to be using mostly two colours here. Um, a third colour got sort of just caught in on my brush there, uh, but that mostly disappears. I'm using indigo and Payne's grey um, to make this pretty much sort of um, a very muted sort of blue, black and white painting, sort of like a, a monochrome. Um, and I'm going to use salt to create some beautiful frost patterns in the foreground. Now I wet my paper all over with a large harky brush and then picked up tube consistency, Payne's grey, indigo and a bit of burnt umber and spread it horizontally across the sky, um, sweeping it backwards and forwards and allowing gravity and the wet paper, the water on the page, to bring the paint down and then I'm just running it across into the foreground creating some distant hills, distant trees and some texture across the foreground but making sure that I leave plenty of unpainted paper for my frosty fields and bits of frosty sparkle and also making sure that I get really um, strong rich paint across my foreground hedgerow because I'm going to be painting in a gate, a fence and a tree. The hedgerow there in the sort of mid-ground is going to be the focal point. As this demonstration is mostly wet in wet, um, I will always pick up my board and turn it around 90 degrees, maybe 180 degrees sometimes, to arrest the flow of water as it runs down the page and to sort of flatten it out and to get, get the washes running the way that I want them to run. Um, and then once it's looking the way I want it to look, I'll lay my board flat and then I'll have to wait a little while until it's slightly drier because I want to apply some salt. And if I apply salt when it's too wet, the, the water will just dissolve the salt and I'll end up with no effect or a bit of a mess. So I waited until the sheen had just gone off most of my paper and I'm sprinkling ordinary table salt across the foreground and I'm hoping that it will give me some kind of really pretty lacy sort of frost patterns across the foreground. It's just ordinary um, table salt. You can use any, any salt will work for this. The important thing is, is that the page shouldn't be too wet and it shouldn't be too dry. Somewhere in between and you'll get these lovely frost patterns. So now I'm going to leave the salt to do its, its magic and, um, and then I'll come back when it's completely dry. So it's completely dry and I've brushed off all the salt. That's quite important to do that. Um, and it's left me these really pretty patterns and I'm quite liking the look of the scene at the moment. Um, so now I'm mixing up quite a rich mixture of my sort of inky consistency, Payne's Grey and Indigo. And using my three quarter inch Cotman flat brush, I'm going to paint in um, a few fence posts and a five bar gate on this edge here. Just kind of rising out of the, the hedgerow there, the gap. So it's like a field boundary. So just using the tips of the flat brush, I'll carefully put in my posts, um, my gate posts and a few fence posts. Um, the gate is going to be quite important here because as you look across the foreground and the frost, your eyes will come to the gate and then they'll move along from the gate and towards the trees that I haven't yet painted yet. And the trees will be the focal point and they'll bring you across um, to look at the rest of the painting, hopefully. Um, 
And I've heard some people say that you should never paint a gate closed, that it blocks the viewer from being able to see around the painting, um, that it ruins the composition. Well, I don't think I agree with that. I think you can paint a gate in whichever way you want and it can be a successful um, if the composition is balanced and if it works well. Um, take a look at the work of um, Edward Sego, who was an absolute master at painting and compositions. And I think just about all his gates are painted closed. So I'm working here on a fairly traditional five bar gate, trying not to get it too perfect. I want it to look convincing, but I want it to look a bit sort of rough and ready and to paint it quite loosely so it fits in with harmoniously with the rest of the style of the painting. And then swapping to my small calligraphy brush and the same inky consistency Payne's Grey and Indigo um, just to put in some sort of wires and sort of over this side I'm going to have broken wires so sort of hanging down off the fence down into the undergrowth. So just enough detail to bring the painting together because the, the actual frosty fields and, and the foreground and the sky um, is very sort of abstract, it's very loose. Um, so it needs, I think, some little touch of realism, but loose realism um, to bring the painting together. And then I'll just want to put a little bit of shadow across underneath the gate and the fence just to link that all in a bit more. Um, and then a sort of a, 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 a sort of a vertical bar across the middle. And of course, going back to the subject of, of gates, if you prefer to paint an open gate, then then please do. There's um, there's no wrong or right way. Um, as long as the, the composition is balanced and it works and if you do paint an open gate, sometimes you have to think about the perspective of the gate. So in actual fact, painting a closed gate like this is a lot easier because you, when it's flat on like this, there's no perspective to trip you up. Now I think I'm just about happy with that. So I'm going to move on and paint in some simple winter trees. Again, just using that same mixture of Payne's Grey and Indigo. It's an inky consistency. And my small calligraphy brush, starting at the base where the hedge is and bringing up my main trunks and a few main branches. And then from each main branch, a few sort of subsidiary branches and then some twigs. going to try and, as you can see here, with the finer lines, getting them sort of so that they overlap in places. And they're kind of, most of the branches will sort of tend in the same sort of direction, but a few of them will go in the opposite direction and crisscross over. And this is another painting that you could do something similar for Christmas cards. You could paint them smaller or paint them um, a large size like this and then print your painting off and um, stick it onto cardboard and make your lovely cards that way. Sorry, my hand gets in the way, but I think you can see it's all pretty much of a muchness. Um, once you get to painting the tree limbs like this, it's pretty much the same technique. Dabbing off with a tissue um, can just give us a little bit of extra texture and a few lighter areas on some of the branches and parts of the trunks.
If you're not confident painting trees or branches like this, have a little practice first before you paint on your, on your wash. And alternatively, you could also pencil in um, a tree first and then go in over your pencil lines. Um, that way is probably a safer way if you've not if you've not painted many trees before, so that you get it right on the page in faint pencil, and then can go over it with paint. I think I'm just about done there. So now just a few little dots and dashes of shadow, um, and twigs and little just a few little bits of something and nothing, just to add a, a little bit more detail to the hedge. Um, and then I'll go in and just finish off the fence, having a little bit of fence coming out. I'll make those trunks slightly longer as well. And then there's something and nothing. And then I'm gonna add another fence post and with the calligraphy brush, put in a few wires so that that fence is just coming through that tangle of hedge and disappearing off over the tape. And I'm pretty sure that's finished, but as always, I like to take the tape off and then have a look at it with a clean white border. And that usually lets me see whether or not it needs anything else. It's like looking at it with fresh eyes. And I'm quite happy with that. I like the starkness of the branches, um, but I'm just thinking that there's a bit too much separation between the two trees. So I'm going to add a few more branches, not too many, um, just enough to link and overlap across the tree a little bit more. I'm being careful not to overdo it at this stage. Um, and I think, I think I'm, I'm much happier with that. The two trees um, link a lot better now. So I'm going to call that one finished. Well, I hope you'll try something like this out. And just bear in mind that with the wet in wet technique like this, um, there's no wrong or right way of doing it. Um, and it doesn't have to turn out exactly the way mine did. In fact, it's very unlikely that you will get it to turn out the same way. Um, and however your wash turns out, the good thing is, the good practice is, is to get used to looking at it and deciding where you need things in order to have a balanced composition. Um, your wash might dictate that you maybe have your elements the other way around. You might have your trees on the right and your gate on the left, um, that sort of thing. And of course, you don't have to stick to the colours that I use. You can use any colours you like. And this kind of technique can be used really to paint any kind of scene. And as I often say, and even though it's a bit of a cliche, I think it holds true. The only limit is your imagination. And these sorts of scenes are a lot of fun and really good practice, especially for beginners. Well, thanks so much for watching. Um, please give us a thumbs up and um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.